let's talk about how your job impacts our customer. Because as an organization, we're all focused on that customer. And even though you may not talk to the customer ever, this is how your job links to that customer ultimately. Hi, everybody. Welcome to People Metrics Live. Uh, my name is Madeline, and I'm the marketing manager here at People Metrics. And today I am joined by Sean, our CEO, and Kirk Lobauer. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves to everyone? Thanks, Madeline. Sean McDade. I'm founder and CEO of People Metrics. Um, People Metrics has been helping companies measure and improve the employee and customer experience for almost 20 years now. Um, and we've started this kind of hybrid of a, of a, I don't know what this is. This is video and a, it's like a live podcast. I guess that's, that's the best way to describe it. Talking about all things customer and employee experience. And today it's an employee experience day. I'm, and I'm super excited to, to dive into it. Kirk. Yeah. Hey everybody. I'm Kirk Lobauer. I'm a business development manager at people metrics. Uh, been here for about eight years and much of that time has been as an analyst and a project manager for customer and employee experience program. So I'm here to give some stories and background on the employee experience work we're talking about today. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, like Sean and Kirk said, we have been doing this for a long time and People Metrics Live uh, is something we recently launched to answer all of your CX and EX questions um, on a weekly basis. So today we are uh, talking about how can you get employees to care about delivering a great customer experience. So I will let uh, Sean and Kirk, you guys take it away. Yeah. So here's something to get everybody's attention. Um, to start off, um, everybody, almost everybody, except for the people who are working with people metrics, are not asking the right questions in their employee surveys. And one of the big reasons is it doesn't include questions for the most part about how a company delivers a great customer experience. And, you know, first, before we even get into that, Kirk, Let's talk about why, why a, a great employee experience is so important for companies. Um, and then we'll link it to the customer experience in a second. But let's first talk about that. And uh, we'll let that, what I just said, settle in for a second. But um, why, why should we care about the employee experience, Kirk? Sure. Well, uh, the employee experience is really the base for everything at a company. Uh, there's been research for a number of years about how a, a employee who is kind of satisfied and engaged is more likely to kind of stay with the company. It's more likely to be engaged in what they do with the company. And ultimately that then translates to the, they are more satisfied with what they receive and they are more likely to retain and kind of build that loyal customer base. So if you don't deliver on kind of starting with that employee, your, the roots of that really aren't there to build out on the rest of the experience. Yeah, I mean, especially these days, and, and this is obviously a very unusual time, right, for all of us in terms of employee experience in general. Um, you know, your, your folks may be working in different locations than they used to. They're prob some of them are probably at home, if not all of them. Um, but no matter where they are, having a great experience is still important and it's still really, really key to almost everything that happens within an organization. So companies that have a great employee experience, as Kirk said, the employees tend to be there longer, right? So they're not leaving. So you don't have to replace them as much. They are more productive and they give what we call discretionary effort, right? Discretionary effort is really what employee engagement means. It means that I'm engaged, I'm committed emotionally to a company, so I will give more effort, discretionary effort, than I would if I wasn't like, feeling that way about the company. Right? So that's, that's really an important point. And these days, it's a lot of great employees attract other great employees, right? So it's referrals and bringing, bringing that employee, another good employee or great employee in because you recommend the organization to people that you know, right? So it's a, a good employee experience or a great employee experience yields a lot of really important business results. And, and this has been something that had been studied over a number of years. I mean, Kirk, we've looked at this like countless times on what 
the employee kind of experience and engagement means to the bottom line of the company. And every time we do such an analysis, we see correlations with key outcomes, right? Like, so this isn't a controversial statement to say the employee experience is important. Yeah, often I think when you do any analysis of customer feedback or employee feedback, sometimes it can be hard to find a linkage if you're looking for something very precise. That's one where it's very easy. If you're looking to align kind of employee engagement with how satisfied does that lead to the customer satisfaction, we've done it with a number of our customers where we get to show uh, in between teams where if you have a team that's more engaged, generally those customers that they end up kind of serving are more satisfied than what you find with other teams. And we're not the only ones to show that connection, as you mentioned. And this is something that's been measured and known since the mid 90s. So here's the thing. The, the, the question of, of the topic today is why do employees need to care about the customer experience? A very fundamental reason is that those who do or those who work for organizations who, where they perceive that the organization is doing that, meaning producing great customer experiences, that in and of itself has a big influence on how engaged they are and, and what their overall employee experience is. So, Madeline, we went and did that study, right, with a representative sample of U.S. full-time employees earlier this year, right? It was right. Q1. Remember that? And when we, we, we asked a lot of questions, that, that was a long survey, right? There were many, many questions. Because what we were trying to do is figure out, you know, what were the questions that made the most difference in terms of a positive in, uh, employee experience where you would have an engaged employee. And one of the really interesting findings there is we came up with 15 questions that mattered more than any others out of like probably, we probably asked 60 or more, maybe 80. There was a lot of them, right? Madeline, I'm trying to even remember how many there were. Um, but it was long. Yeah. <laughs> but there were 15 that mattered, and two of the most important ones directly related to the company delivering a great customer experience. And one was the reputation of the company, that the company has a great reputation, which great reputations usually mean that it has something to do with constantly delivering value or good service. And the other one was a direct question around the company is known for delivering a great uh, customer experience or great customer service, right? So in other words, employees who said that they agreed with those statements also said that they were engaged or would recommend the company to others. And those who disagreed with those were less likely to be engaged or recommend the company to others. So in and of itself, if you get nothing out of this, this talk today, it's that when you're thinking about questions to ask your employees on a regular basis, because I'm, I'm sure a lot of you survey employees regularly, questions around how the comp these employees perceive your company and their ability to deliver a great customer experience will be a factor in how engaged and committed they are to your organization. Yeah, so, and I think intuitively, when you think through it in that way, it makes sense of so much of engagement comes, to, I have a sense of purpose in what I do and, and a sense of purpose in what this company does. So connecting your role to that end result to the customer is really going to be key. So intuitively it makes sense, but it, it is one of those things that we find in working with our customers tends to be a gap in their employee engagement survey because you, it, when you build an employee engagement survey, it tends to be so focused internally that you miss this pretty key point of the employee experience. That's right. So, you know, I must have looked at, in my career, I've looked at thousands of employee surveys probably. Um, and lots of ones for that we, lots of clients who we work with, we, we see what they've asked previously, right? So I would say never, in fact, have I seen a question outside of people metrics when we include them that there is those external questions on employee experience and engagement surveys. And, and it's because it's not obvious. And without kind of our experience linking this over the years, I don't think we probably would have thought of it either. But then we started to put to add this question in and it's always what they call a key driver. So a key driver is 
quest, uh, uh, one or two or three questions that you ask your employees that make the biggest difference in terms of their overall experience or engagement, right? And they, and they, they outweigh everybody else, all the others. And we keep seeing these questions come up to the top and it really does make sense. Um, you know, when you think about, you know, like you said, Kirk, pride in work, purpose, you know, feeling good about being part of an organization that is helping a lot of other people, that, that I think that all plays into this. Yeah, and, and I think the, the one thing I'd, I'd add to this is, of course, that's not to say that that's all that matters. There's a lot of things you need to get in building an employee experience. You know, you, yep. you, they need to have a positive work-life balance. They need to have the resources to do their job. But that mm -hmm. is all baseline. The idea is if you want to differentiate as a company, if you want to provide a great employee experience, you need to make that final connection to the customer. Without a doubt. Yeah. And that's what we call a higher order <clears throat> kind of need or factor, <clears throat> right? Like we're not saying like, that's a really good point. Kurt. We're not saying that if you're not paying people a competitive wage or you're not giving them say, a, compu a computer that actually works to do their job or whatever equipment they need to do their job, that having, delivering a great employee experience, a company, customer experience will, will outweigh all of that. It won't. Like they still will be focused on those basic needs. But if you can get through those basic needs and then start getting up to those higher order factors, I call them, that really create an engaged, committed employee, it starts getting into things like purpose, like I have a, a career path here, like I'm part of an organization I can be proud of. And part of that pride is, is their reputation in the industry and their ability to deliver a great customer experience. That's, that's kind of what, what we're saying here. Um, but I certainly wouldn't omit those questions, even in a short pulse survey, if you're doing like 15 questions or so, I, I would include those because I think they make a big difference. Yeah. And okay, so another thing, Kirk, you mentioned that this, this is not new, this idea of, you know, employees who have a great experience and are engaged are, are leading to a customer who's going to have a great experience and, and do great things. Because a great customer experience also means that that customer is sticking around, they're buying more, and they're recommending you just like the employee who has a great experience tends to stick around, you know, give more effort and recommend you more. But this, this chain of events has been around since the mid 90s. When I first got into the industry, I read a book called The Service Profit Chain by James Heskett. And that, they talked about that very thing. And they applied it ironically to a company called Sears. If anybody remembers that, I think Sears is in trouble right now, if they're even existing. But back in the day, they had, they had really applied that model in, in a very effective way. And that book has been around for a long time. That was an eight, a Harvard Business Review article. Um, I've really spent my whole career uh, looking at that relationship between c employee, customer, and outcomes. And it's a consistent thing all the time. Um, and I think, you know, being in this space, right, Kirk, you've worked on employee experience programs. You've worked on customer experience programs. One of the things we've always said is they should be more tightly intertwined. For the, for the organization to really get a benefit because they have so much to do with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you know, just a, a, an example of that, uh, you know, w when it comes to someone who is responsible for building that employee experience, someone who's responsible for building that employee culture, you have to be buying the customer feedback back to your employees because that's part of building the customer experience in your culture. Uh, and, and one example of, of how we did that at, at, at People Metrics, we were working with a, a, a company that had a customer experience survey. And as part of that customer experience survey, give feedback of what they really enjoyed. And they had a great experience with you know, this employee and we want to recognize them for the great work they do they would take that internally and kind of share that with that, that, that person who's normally a front facing employee, who's going to be an account manager to say, hey, look, thank you so much for the work you do. It is important that you don't just stop the customer feedback there. There's a whole line of people behind that front facing person who 
impacted that customer experience. And so for them, building a customer centric culture and kind of making sure that every employee understood their impact on the customer meant sharing that further internally. But we built a program where that front facing employee was able to kind of nominate folks and say, these are the other individuals who really helped make this happen. And it was what we called the pay it forward program, where they would shoot those notes internally. So it, we made sure impacting with the customer isn't just a frontline item. This is something that needs to kind of permeate the organization. And as an employee culture, we need to foster that by making sure right. that kind of when we hear from a customer, that gets throughout. Definitely. So just let me try to summarize what you said and 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 everything that we've said so far. So in order to have a really strong culture and engaged employees, based on our experience you have to be an organization that cares about the customer and you have to ask those employees whether they think you do, right? So that, that's the first like takeaway from this talk is ask at least these two questions that we, we just mentioned about your reputation in the industry overall and whether you're known for delivering either a great customer experience or great customer service, depending on kind of what industry you're in. Because that, that will give you a really good indication of, of engagement and things that you can you can move. Now, if you happen to get lower scores on those, right? Like what you were, that's what you were talking about. Like, how do you really get everybody at the company to care about that, to really embrace it? Because it's easy for the front line to do so. Like you said, if you're an account manager, if you're constantly talking to customers and you know, you get customer feedback all the time, you're naturally going to care about the customer experience because it's part of your job. You're probably getting evaluated on it. You maybe get getting bonused on this information, all that stuff, right? But how do you get the people in the back office, if you will, who are helping you or helping the organization, you know, deliver that experience somehow? How do you get them to care about it? Because it's, it, it may be disconnected for them, right? Like somebody doing like, let's just take an accounting firm, right? So you've got partners de de dealing with clients directly. They're getting all of the feedback, probably. They're getting all the benefits and rewards. What about the, the associate who just came in from college who's doing all, the, all of like the Excel modeling and, and projections for that client, or the, but the partner's the one that presents it, right? The, they're just sitting there just grinding on, on Excel spreadsheets all day, right? And what you just described is a way for that partner, based on that feedback that the client gave him or her, to say, hey, you, without, you, you're, without these models, there's no way we could have made this happen. There's no way they would have given us this feedback. Just thank you, right? And it's a way to make it real for that person who may, not, who, who may just be heads down all day. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it's really yeah. important to think about, like, how do you actually do this, not just for your frontline people who are interacting with customers every day, but the entire organization? Definitely. Yeah. And the, I mean, I guess the other way, Kirk, we had talked about, like, how else do you make customer experience real for, for all employees? Like, if we were to ask you to outline, give, give some advice to an organization, what would you say are a couple things they could consider to make a employee care about the customer experience or at least be aware of its importance um, within the organization? Are there a couple of tips that you can share? Yeah, and I, I think can I, I'd hope kind of based on what we've said so far, it's clear that we are talking about a broader mindset and we're talking about how do you achieve that mindset. Uh, and on one, it does start with leadership, kind of with any of these things. If you want to kind of drive not only the importance of the customer experience to your employees, but help them understand how they impact it, you need to make sure this is something that goes across the organization. So generally, kind of what we find when working with our customers, you want to convey this to leadership. And the benefit is it's very easy to convey because there has been research on this for so long. We're able to show it with our client data. You know, there have been books on this since the 90s. This is something that's very clearly demonstrated. You need to have that customer experience. Once you demonstrate that, uh, 
you really, you need to measure it. You need to measure it the right way of understand where your employees stand on this currently. Uh, across teams, it's going to be different into what linkage do they feel with the customer experience. So you first need to have that baseline understanding of how are we performing, how well are we communicating this to our employees, uh, and kind of where do we need to improve their engagement from there. Uh, and so after you get the leadership, after you get the measurement, the last thing is then building that structure of okay. connecting that customer feedback to employees. And that's going to be different for every organization. For that uh, prior example, it was sharing that survey feedback via kind of direct employee channels. Uh, other clients of ours have had uh, uh, a client that I had that was a distribution center. They had TVs throughout their warehouse where they would kind of regularly put up this customer feedback. Because if you think, you know, if you're working in a warehouse in a distribution center, you are never having customer interaction. It is very easy to feel separate from that. So the actual solution is going to be different, but the process is always leadership, buy-in to measurement so you can define where you need to improve and then building that structure based on your organization to make that connection to the customer experience. Definitely. You know, I've had clients, Kirk, who, you know, if they're focused on making the customer real for every employee, they train all of their managers to have that conversation with those employees in linking their specific job to the customer, right? And that, that's not a survey or anything. That's just a program and a process and a conversation that happens across the organization you know, on a fairly regularly, regular basis on, hey, let's talk about how your job impacts the customer our customer, because as an organization, we're all focused on that customer. And even though you may not talk to the customer ever, this is how your job links to that customer ultimately, right? And the way you said it, it's a mindset. The key to having a customer-centric culture and having employees care about the customer experience, which is related, is having everybody's mindset on the customer and how my job ultimately impacts that customer. And I think if you do that, and then you ask the, the, these questions we're recommending you ask to employees on a regular basis, you're going to see the scores on those items go up over time. And then what you're going to see is your employee experience and engagement scores go up over time, which will result in very good things for your organization. So I think big picture, you know, hopefully we're introducing some, some food for thought that perhaps you haven't thought of in the past on, on questions you might ask in employee surveys as well as some interventions and actions that you can change management that you can implement, you know, either within groups or across your organization to help every employee relate to the customer in a better way. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, this is great. And, and I see that we have uh, some questions in the Q and A. Um, Sean and Kirk, are you able to, to see that? I just wanted to give you a, a minute or two to just take a look at the questions we've gotten. Um, thank you guys so much for sending those over. Um, yeah. I think we, we did address um, that, that first question I'm seeing here about um, which, which are the right questions um, according to us to ask. I think we, we talked about that um, in terms of you know, asking about pride in the company and, and perceptions around what type of um, experience is delivered. Anything else um, that you guys want to want to hit on here? Well, you know, Madeline, we've, as you know, we have, we have these 15 questions. We should do one of these just on those questions at some Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Yeah, I was and thinking we'll, the same We'll go thing. through all the questions, but the two questions, just I'll, I'll, to reiterate them, is one is around your reputation in the industry. So I'd have a question around you know, um, your company, whatever the name is, has a great reputation in the industry, agreement scale, right? Um, a one to five agreement scale. And the second one is my company delivers, a, it, my company is known for, that's the key question, my company is known for delivering a great customer experience or great customer service. Or you can play with the words on it, but it's something around connecting with the customer, also on an agreement scale. Um, and those are two of our top 15 recommended questions. So, you know, there's a lot of other questions, as Kirk mentioned, that are, you know, more core and traditional around rewards and, and resources and, and career and, 
work-life balance and things like that. But, uh, you know, these are, these are, are, are also quite important and we'll do one of these on, on the whole, that whole model at some point, Madeline, that would be fun. Yeah, definitely. It'd be great to walk through that. All right. Let's look at the other. Um, all right. You're suggesting to ask employees if they agree that the company, right? However, they're the ones who deliver it through. Are, are we asking them? So the question is, this is a good question. Um, they're the ones who deliver the, cus the, the customer experience. So in reality, would we ask them to evaluate their own work? Um, yes and no. Yes, in that um, most people attribute their own performance at a much higher level than it really is. So they, they in, in a lot of employees' minds, even if they're delivering a great uh, customer experience, they're still able to perceive if the rest of the organization isn't and they are able to answer that question. That's why it's key to ask the question around, my company is known for, rather than I am delivering it, <laughs> right? So they're, you're, you're really asking them to give you a, a perception on the reputation of the company in general, as well as their reputation specifically in delivering a great customer experience. You'll get a lot of insights from the way that your employees perceive that the organization as a whole delivers it almost separate from themselves because almost no one rates their own performance poorly. So if you ask the question yeah. like, you know, if you asked it differently and said, you know, do you deliver a great customer or I deliver a great customer experience, you're going to see a lot of fives, like, which means strongly agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's a great, you know, to the point of the framing, what we're trying to get to is, how do you think the customer sees it? You know, we are, it says, how do we, it's supposed to be customer centric. So you are really kind of trying to make it apart from yourself and think of, you know, is this our company reputation and kind of put yourself in the customer's shoes, which is often, you know, if as an employee, if you're able to do that and you think the customer has a great opinion of us, that the reason that helps employee engagement is because then you feel that sense of purpose, which is why it's important to measure and why it's important to build to that. But it is a sort of separate rate. Yeah, there's another great question around how was pay it forward organized? And that could also be another topic of, a, of one of these discussions. But let, let me give a high level overview of that, like just a quick answer. Um, within people metrics software platform, the in, in, in this case, the person who received the feedback, um, say it was the account manager or partner, whomever that lead person was, they were, a, they got alerted that feedback was provided. They were, they, they were able to go into our software and then they, there would be a list of employees that, that they, that work at the organization that they then could basically tag on that comment send it to them with another note indicating, you know, thank you. And that, that, that um, piece of feedback would be kind of linked to that employee going forward. And they would see it. It would be forever linked to them. It would then be something that they could review when they got more and more of them over time. And it was used for a variety of purposes that I think I don't have enough time to go through today. But that's just at a very high level how it works. I love the name of that program too, that it's pay it forward, right? Because once you get a recognition from somebody else, what you want to naturally do is keep passing it on and paying it forward. So that's great. That is absolutely true. Great. Well, Madeline, it looks like we've, we're about a half hour in. Um, yeah, yeah. Usually when we wrap up, um, are there, is there any other questions that are coming in or anything else you think we need to cover that we haven't? Um, I'm, I'm taking a look. Questions. I think we hit on everything. Um, thank you all so much for sending uh, your questions in. This has been great conversation. And um, yeah, and, and we've got some great ideas for some more sessions that we'll be doing. Um, we'll, we'll definitely be doing one on the um, our, our employee experience model um, for, for questions and, uh, and, and digging into that pay it forward kind of system. I think that's great. 
Um, but yeah, so thank you all for, for joining us today. Uh, this is again, yeah, it's just been a great conversation. And of course, if you have friends or colleagues, anyone on your team that couldn't make it to today's session, uh, there's no worries there. We're, we're going to be putting the recordings of People Metrics Live up on our YouTube channel. So you can always check that out. And of course, we're doing uh, more sessions coming up after this. So you can go to www.peoplemetrics.com slash events to check out what What's coming up next. Uh, I also encourage you to check out our EX or employee experience blog, which is at peoplemetrics.com slash EX dash blog. That's where we're putting all of our EX content. And we're also on all the social networks if you want to follow us there, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and, and yeah, I know uh, next week we're going to be doing a, another session on CX. That's going to be on Tuesday the 3rd. And uh, on Thursday, again, of next week, we'll be talking about EX again. So be sure to just check out our events page. We've got a lot going on there. And um, yeah. And, and next week, it'll be at 2 o'clock on a Thursday. Yes, on 2 o'clock. <laughs> Eastern time. Eastern yes, time. good to note. Good to note. This mm -hmm. was a special 1 o'clock session today. Um, and yeah, had great questions again today. Thank you so much. And if you have any more questions, uh, just feel free to direct them to our contact page. That's peoplemetrics.com slash contact. Uh, just keep sending us your questions there. And hey, we've got two new ideas for, for more sessions. So we'd love to, love to hear from you and, and keep it on going. So thank you all so much again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Until next time. Bye. -bye. Bye.